I'm not sure you guys are aware that like I, I put up the homework for the new homework, like homework two. Uh, so it will be due like end of next week. Um, so we continue to uh, continue our discussion on CNN and uh, look into different architectures. Like, uh, if you remember, we ended last time like uh, for VGG Net. That's the kind of the winner for the um, 2014 image light competition. But actually, nothing fancy. Basically, Alex Lad, they, but they put more layers into that. And but also like that one, they I guess they removed the local response normalization and they do as good as like, uh, any other lateral so I guess that's when like, people s stop using this like uh, local response normalization and uh, then I like, okay let's and also they introduce these smaller filters uh, the ideas are instead of like using larger filters in Alex that uh, they just here, they, yeah. They just replace it like lots of smaller filters, so or uh, lots of three by three filters, and um, uh, that that's more or less about it. Nothing really sp fancy about that. So today we will talk about like a couple more architectures, in particular like uh, Google Lat and West Lat. So uh, Google Lat, of course, is by Google, and then the West Lat is by Microsoft, and. Uh, Google Land is a winner for 2014 uh, ImageNet competition for several categories. So they, they have a couple of new ideas. So uh, they have this inception idea. It's, again, not really something fancy. It's just like you basically like combine several different type of um, lab, um, kind of uh, filter size like in, cas in parallel. And they call this a, a inception module. I, I don't know why it's called inception. They just have good, <laughs> uh, uh, good taste of making names, I guess. So uh, and um, of course, naively you can imp implement this inception module like that. You have like several like one by one confluence and three by three, five by five, and so on. But this way you do it is not very efficient. So um, what what we want to do is say, oh, okay, maybe we do some counting first. So let's say if we have this like one by one, three by three, five by five, and three by three polling here. So in terms of the output size, of course I, I will have like uh, from the one by one conf, lab, conf layer here, I will have like, assuming the input is like 28 by 20, I'm 256. Then my output size will be 28, 28, 128. And uh, and for the West, say, let's say for this guy here, uh, basically the size will be the same. Assume I use uh, sufficient padding for each of one, each of them. Uh, but of course, I, uh, I uh, if I have this I feed by feed, I have one ninety two filters. I have like that would size would be one ninety two by twenty eight twenty eight. Now, how about number of operations? So if we count the number of operations, oh by the way, like after we have this. What I'm going to do is I will simply cascading all the outputs uh, to form a, a a larger layers, like more thicker layers here. So then the total, the the final output size will be 20 by 20 by like 672 here. And uh, if you count the number of operations here, like for each of them, so okay, maybe I should hide it first. <laughs> so uh, for this guy here, what's the well, possibly number of operation here. So, uh, remember that like we have the convolution is is basically just a dot product, right? So for each convolution, I will need like twenty eight by twenty eight by by one. If I is one by one, twenty eight by twenty eight by one so many operation more or less and then like uh, I will basically I will go for the entire input right so I will go for each of the uh, each paces there so I, I should be like this size multiplied by 20 by 20 by 1 for this first filter and similarly for the second filter number of op operation will be approximately 28 by 
oh sorry let me not change what I'm saying um, the filter size is 1 by 1 by 128 uh, I don't know what I'm saying okay it 1 by 1 by 128 multiplied by the size of the input so that that's the number of operations for this guy here and the number of operations for this guy here will be uh, each filter have size 3 by 3 by 192 kind of like 3 by 3 by uh, yes 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 uh, I, I shouldn't say 3 by 3 by 192 I, I should say 3 by 3 but I have 192 outputs there so I will do 192 times so maybe just 3 by 3 first um, actually I think uh, Um, actually, I didn't count quite correct, even though my outcome is co a correct. So, okay, uh, the the um, each of the when I do the dot product, each of them will be a three by three by two fifty six, right? So I I have the original input is uh twenty eight by twenty eight by two fifty six. So when I try to do a dot product for for one uh, kind of like compute one dot here for for one one filter here, then the filter size the vo volume of the filter is a three by three by two fifty six, right? And then I need to go for each of the points here. So I need to multiply by twenty a by twenty a. And then I have like 192 filters here, so I need to multiply by 192. Yeah, okay, th this is more like it. So therefore, like this will be total number of operations for this guy here, uh, and so on and so forth. So therefore, like these are the total number of operations. If you count all of them, like in terms of convolution, you have like about uh, 800 million uh, operations. So uh, that are quite a lot. And uh, we can reduce it quite a bit. Uh, I'm also like this layer is a bit fake, right? Because I here if I just go for polling directly, so I cannot reduce the depth for this guy. So then uh, basically each time I go for this inception board, I will kind of like expand the thickness quite a bit. So of course we can reduce that by using uh, if you remember we can use this uh, one by one conf filter um, that we can shrink the um, the size of the thickness there and they have a kind of fancy name for that they call it the bottleneck layer so it's something like uh, as you see here if the input is like like this like uh, have a thickness of or like 64 depth of 64 here I can go for one by one conflict to squeeze it like to like say like 32 uh, then, for example, I can apply that in the mass polling layer. Then I can uh, reduce the thickness for the mass polling layer there. And I, I basically for for the inception implementation like by Google, like they will apply this kind of bottleneck layer everywhere. So, for example, like you have to mass polling, you apply this bottleneck layer, and also like for each of these. Uh, Confluation layer, you apply this bottleneck, bottleneck layer first. And um, when you do that, like, it kind of like reduce the size of the input, right? So for example, if you look at it here, uh, I have this uh, bottleneck layer that reduce the uh, thickness of the input by from 256 to like just 64. Then if you do the counting as we, what we did like earlier, if you count all the total output number of operations, even though like you have more blocks here, actually you reduce the number of operations quite significantly, almost reduced by uh, one uh, like two third. So you you have uh, only two, three hundred something like number of operations left, and uh, that that that's the this so called this inception layer here. Um. And basically, the Google net, net is just stacking like, many of these inception layer, inception module, uh, into the network. So they uh, basically have just like some uh, conventional networks, conflict first, like just uh, 
uh, compiling normalization layers the two times, then afterwards just stack multiple like, inception layers. And that's about it. And at the end, like, they, they, um, they, for, for the Google Lite implementation, they didn't use a fully connected layer. So they just have a um, um, aging basically have the output, like, and then um, just uh, say if you have, uh, it's too tiny, I cannot see, but uh, say if you, uh, 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 for example, like if you uh, get at the end the number, the last layer have an output like uh, a thousand, and if you just have ten classes, what you can do is that you can split like this into uh, ten pieces, and then just do averaging for each of them. So then, like instead of have a fully connected layer, you just do a, a averaging to get the output for that. Um, and also they they append some like intermediate block in the middle. Here this one is just for training. So they have this auxiliary, auxiliary um classification outputs. So it's like just attached to this like intermediate layer, uh intermediate output from the uh inception module. And then you you can you will take this and all three of them like for training, trying to minimize the um, the loss like for the combined loss there, but during testing you can remove that. So you just use the last one. Um, and this is Google Lab. It's what what actually uh, come to look at that is not so complicated. As actually, it's quite simple. So um, the main contribution is to introduce this inception module. And as I mentioned, they, they don't actually use fully connected layer. Uh, that's their choice. I, it, it's hard to say whether, may, probably they try different combination. And um, uh, uh, it's hard to tell like, whether like uh, they gain or loss if you, you, you put it back the fully connected layer. Because uh, if you look at like the winner for the next year, Westlab, they, they, they remove many of the fully connected layer, but they keep one. Uh, so I guess like, this is some of the choices you can, um, you can make. And uh, I mean, if you count the number of parameters after all this, all this trick here, actually they managed to have like almost ten times, actually more than ten times less parameters than Alex lab, and and they're significantly better than Alex lab also. Like uh, if you remember, like the Alex lab is here, right? So you can reduce like ten percent uh, um, in terms of like. Uh, the percentage of error, and uh, and then finally, like let's talk about the Westnet. So, and the Westnet uh, is by by Microsoft, and uh, the idea is like they look at. Um, of course, like, after 2014, like Google Lab, people just think, okay, let's try to put more and more and more in layers and see what happens, and. Um, um, people in, in Microsoft, they tried that and it didn't work out well. So as you can see here, so they just, if they, they didn't impose any trick, so they just tried to train like let's say 20 layers and also 56 layers. Uh, they just find that like you cannot, um, okay, I'm, I am thinking, like, did I, did I, uh, oh yeah, I did. Um, so, uh, we we just cannot um not just the test testing error is higher for fifty six error. You can't even overfit the model, basically like uh you look at the training error, still like twenty layers is better than fifty six layer. So apparently we have some problem with training. So um and uh, uh actually by the way th that's a good uh Kind of uh, advice, I think, from Kapafi uh, and, and many fellows. Like, uh, when whenever you are working on machine learning and like you have some training data, always try to see if you can overfit the model. <laughs> so what I mean is like, uh, if you have like um, a thousand samples or two thousand samples or like ten thousand samples, uh, 
you may pick like maybe just 100 and try to fit into the model and uh, supposingly like if your model is complex enough or like any other little letters you should be able to overfit the model to get the training error all the way to zero um, uh, and uh, so that that you can just uh, I mean it's a sanity check right you, especially if you build a new book model you're not even sure like whether the model makes sense or like maybe you have some implementation error so uh, if you you have something like from scratch it's really good uh, always good to test on like, whether you can you're able to overfit your model so I'm here like he can't even manage to overfit the model basically so then um, then the idea what they have the idea is like okay maybe the original idea is like uh, maybe since we have inserted so many layers already so we can uh, argue that like maybe the all earlier layers already doing a pretty good job to approximate the function so then what's when we add additional layer maybe instead of trying to train the additional layer to uh, kind of like fit into the output directly maybe we can try to train the layer to fit into the residual or like the difference uh, of the of the uh, output from the input so something like this so I mean like if my output here is already so close uh, to what I'm I'm hoping to be the desired output uh, I mean what I'm saying that the input here from the earlier layer uh, that essentially is the output from the earlier layer is already is getting so close to what we desire so maybe like we don't want to train a lateral here to um, kind of like directly to get the output now maybe we want to just train it to um, to recover the residual so in other words I, 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 let's say I have this layer here um, now my my output here is equal to this input added like this value here right so essentially if I do that like essentially I'm training this with this to be false to be the difference right oh, okay I hope I, I make it clear I, I hope you can read, read the figure here so it should be clear so if I I'm forcing this to be what I'm desired desired output here and if I structure like that essentially I'm forcing this part here to be equal to the difference of the input and the output right okay th this is the idea uh, <laughs> but what I'm saying that like it turns out that mm, it's not clear maybe like uh, I think many people now believe that like why we have the gain is really this skip connection it's not nothing to do with wh whether we have this uh, argument that like we we are training for the residual rather than training for um, for the I mean trying to train this intermediately to learn the residual rather than to learn the original output so um, okay but anyway like this is the original idea so and it works really well so so basically what, what they have is they have this residual block now they call this is all residual block the original Westlight is like they just add, I mean, um, kind of like cascade all this uh, residual block like together like this. And then like, uh, let's see, uh, uh, and they, they kind of periodically will double the number of filters and also downsample the size uh, of the, the dimension of the input by using stride 2. So here they didn't use polling, they just use polling here, but they, they just use a try to uh, to do down sampling uh, in the west uh, in the conf layer. Uh, um, and they add a, I mean uh, something is a uh, they also have uh, add a conf layer at the beginning. This is a seven by seven conf layer. Of course, you can argue that like, maybe we can also use this one by one trick. Um, or like small filter fee by fee uh, filters to cascade multiple filters maybe you will gain a little bit I don't know um, and they don't have lots of fully connected layers they just keep one fully connected layer 
and to generate like uh, this uh, because it's like for image lab uh, competition they have thousand classes so I have like uh, have uh, just generate that uh, that um, uh, score for these thousand classes. Uh, so and they, they have different versions, just have different number number of depths here, like 34, 50, 101, and so on. Uh, and uh, and uh, and by the way, like also like when they have this uh, residual block, they can uh, they also apply like the bottleneck check or like, whatever. Like they just do this. Got one by one com, um, layer conf layer to just reduce the dimension. So let's say like you have input here, uh, used to be the thickness is two fifty six. Then they squeeze it to dimension, they like squeeze the number of layers to just sixty four, and then they apply the filter again, and then they just expand it again to two fifty six. That kind of like um, reduce the number of parameters and kind of, uh, kind of reduce the number of operations as well. And um, and this is a kind of like some other details. Say like they use batch long like for every comp layer, like after every comp layer, and they use the half year initialization. If you remember, they like have this how to initialize the weight. So uh, actually, this is like the paper also introduced this uh, over two like uh, the original half year in initialization. I didn't mention the over two so. Uh, but if you do it using the loop there, then you need to over two, right? If you remember, let me derive that. And uh, for optimizer, they use uh, just stochastic gradient design with momentum. I guess at that time, they didn't have Adam yet. And learning weights, also, like, they, they didn't have a kind of fancy learning weights uh, scattering there yet. So they just, say like, start with 0 0.1, and then once they which are part two, and then like, they divide the learning weight by 10 again. So uh, minimal, minimum ba mini batch size is 256, and they have a wa weight decays. That's the vocalization is 10 to minus 5. And somehow they didn't use dropout. I think they tried it, at, and they think they didn't gain that much. And maybe like also like dropout, uh, of course, uh, you, you, you will increase the training time somehow. So uh, if it didn't help, and maybe they try initially, it didn't help, and they, they just don't use job. And even they don't use job, they did really well at that year. Like basically, they win all the competition. They won all the competitions, all the categories in that competition, basically. And um, by a wide margin as well. Like, for example, detection is like 16% better, localization 27% better. Like, uh, this is a this is a two different data image uh, data set. So you have the image that data set, you have the Coco data set. Um, so they just sweep the the first place in in the entire competition. Um, and then finally they got this a um, uh, cup average is really pretty small, so uh, close to human performance. So, uh, okay, actually I'm doing pretty quick here, so I guess that's fine. So, uh, here, so uh, that, uh, that's a one summary paper, if you're interested in comparison, like maybe there are more summary paper like, like this. You know, I, I was not too updated, but this one is, has a pretty nice comparison of like different architecture. So you can look into like, uh, for example, like earlier uh, architecture, for example, Alex Lat, and uh, here this axis is number of operations here. You see, like, uh, and also like the size of the circle is the um, memory usage, I think. So, um, and you have VGG Lat, like, is have like quite a lot of usage. It definitely, it's not very uh, kind of like efficient. It's not very efficient, right? but early years, like, many people like to use VGGNet because like, it's widely available. Uh, and uh, if you want to get a better, I would say, um, uh, trade-off of uh, accurate size and all these things, I like, probably you want to go for Westlet. And like, there's some different inception version. Like, uh, 
I'm not so sure like what's the difference version like uh, the precise architecture the difference of the precise I mean the precise difference of the different architecture but uh, I believe like they basically both Westlet and like uh, Google Lab they kind of borrow like lots of the idea like from each other so uh, they just become uh, more and more similar so um, and uh, and also like this paper they uh, they also have a light figures like on uh, comparison on the power consumption uh, I think this is power consumption for, for training I, I believe uh, and also like that's like uh, the forward time like if you want to uh, um, this is like for testing so if you want to uh, actually use that this is actually useful because uh, you uh, you at testing time like how fast you want the light work basically um, Alex led of course uh, is pretty fast okay this is I, I don't know what's B and I was that actually um, but anyway like uh, where's this uh, other one okay I'm not sure this B and stand for anyway uh, but let's look at Westlet so we have Westlet is around here so we are talking about like uh, 15 millisecond per image something like um, yeah it uh, and I, 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 yeah, I think like testing, you don't need to use GPU as well because like, that's not much you can do for parallelization because you only have one image typically if you test, unless like you, you also test with like many images. If you process video, maybe you can do some parallelization, but um, typically like you, you can do well with just the CPU and so on. Um, and uh, let's mention a couple uh, other works, uh, related works. Uh, one I want to mention is this network in networks. I want to mention this because uh, this is the paper that uh, introduced this like uh, bottleneck layer, this one by one comp layer. Uh, at least like widely kind of um, advertised that, like, I guess. Uh, so uh, many people when they cite the um, kind of when they reference, try to reference um, the idea of like this one one by one conf layer they will refer to this work here uh, and of course like both Google Lab and Westlet actually uh, borrow idea from this paper and uh, and uh, and this this is like uh, uh, a later work like after Westlet so uh, that's what I mentioned like, uh, the earlier version you remember like they, they have this skip connection they always say for each layer they put a skip connection right as I mentioned like, later on they realize that like, it, it doesn't really need to do that like they may have like a long skip connection like, from from maybe skip uh, over several layers and, and work uh, actually even better performance somehow so that suggests that like, it, it's not really that residual of course you can still came like okay you have this whole block here it's it's trained to learn the residual, uh, and uh, you can argue that as well. But uh, but you s you can see example that they have more crazy skip connection. They just pointing everywhere, and and once you have this skip connection, it it, it works well. And like uh, there's also a another work that suggests a wider network, uh, or like network with a wider layers. What we mean by wider layer is just like you have the the thickness of layer in, increase increases. So for example, like this guy here. So instead of like originally you have f filters here, you have f times k filters there. And uh, uh, that paper they argue that like you can get better performance just have like wider layers, like for example, fifty like uh, wide layer. Uh, with same architecture of West like that will outperform say like, with like um like one fifty two layer of like original West like. Um and of course another nice advantage of this like when you have like thin layers I mean this layer by while is more easy to be parallelizable. So you you it's more uh it's easier to just 
use GPUs and so on to parallel this like, when you have like wide, wide block like that. Uh, and um, and there's another work that like uh, called Westlex is uh, kind of like by the same group of like uh, Westlet. So they they here is like kind of like boring idea from uh, Google Net now. It's like uh, they they it's similar to this wide layer, but now instead of like you have like um, more filters, also like you you have like each of it's very like similar to this inception module right in the Google Lab today. So you have like multiple kind of like path basically in this layer. So um, and uh, and of course they argue like this performed better than the earlier version. And also like they they uh, have used this skip connection to intru introduce regularization. Uh, new regularization idea. For example, this one is very similar to like actually I should say like have a s similar favor as a drop drop out. Basically, have like a lateral like this like with skip connection. So during training, you can kind of like remove some of the block basically randomly drop out some of the blocks there. So and then you just directly pass this. And testing, you just use the whole network. And it turns out like uh, if you train like this, it's, uh, you can get some extra gain somehow. And uh, there's another uh, paper that called Fatulat that uh, basically like you just use skip connection and all the way like you see like this is uh, you have comp layer here and you have this essentially you can think of this as all skip connection where right? you just and uh, again like they. They, uh, they argue to have like better performance than prior work. Like if you, so in the sense you can see that like, oh actually I have another work like this. Like this is another one that you you just have skip connection everywhere. So pointing everywhere, I mean it's just doing well. So like you have here, basically input is merged to here, right? Uh, so what, okay, I, I I hope like this is easy to understand here. So what what this here is just you you have go for this comp layer here so you have an output right and then you just concatenate uh, your input here with the output here and then have a new new layer here yeah and you can also like here jump to other layers and concatenate and so on and uh, and surprisingly it works well again so um now you may ask like, <laughs> then uh, apparently this will be unrelated to this original residual block idea, right? Because original is saying, okay, I I'm trying to train this, uh, this part maybe to learn to uh, fit the residual uh, of the or the difference between the input and output rather than uh, fitting the output directly. Um, so any suggestion why this skip connection help? What do you think? So is my question here? So, I mean, like you see, like actually, this is interesting, right? <laughs> they probably like create a new cup technique out of a 
not so accurate idea. So like all of them are very accurate reason. They they have this original reason to introduce this skip connection, just saying I want to train the residual, basically the uh, output minus input, rather than train to learn the output directly. And then and then they try all this and after afterward like later on people find that like it doesn't really matter. Like I can just have this skip connection and like, pointing everywhere and then just one just it turns out it just work better. I I think this is a pretty uh, one of these great discovery in recent years of like deep learning because uh if you think of like several of these uh, really nice ideas, this work out fine, this definitely is one of them. Like including this dropout and uh, batch formalization, reinitialization and so on. And and apparently when they do that, like uh, you can see like Westnet they one they once they did that, like this is a huge gain also like for Westnet, like from here. If you look at Google Lad from compared to last year, it doesn't really gain that much because for Google Net, they cannot increase the number of layers that much. Uh, probably they tried already, but then it didn't work. So it didn't work, so therefore they increased the thickness, right? They, they just put out multiple modules in the same layer. And, and they managed to gain something, but they didn't gain so much, really. But what's that, then they, they have this new idea, just putting connection everywhere. Then it just like suddenly like uh, almost half the uh, the the uh, the error rates there. So any any suggestion like. Any wild guess? Like any guess is okay. I just want to hear some some idea. Like what what do you think? Um. I actually, I, I think that many people now I believe that like they believe that gain is not from from a better networks. The gain is like, actually from better training because like. Uh, in the sense, if you have a deep network without this skip connection here, you you think of like you you're just doing bad pop, right? So when you do bad pop, like when you have many layers, no matter how good you do this way initialization and so on, like your gradient is going to the um, the information of the gradient is going to decay. The quality of that gradient will decay like, as you go back right to earlier layers. So. Um, you 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 will have this gradient information coming back, but probably the quality is getting worse and worse. So if you try to train in the earlier layers there, you're just not able to train it well. So in the sense that this skip connection is just help you in training. So because I, if you think of whenever you have this skip connection like somewhere here to here, you you just like have gradient information directly, kind of like jump from here to here. Right? You can't kind of like skip many layers there. So therefore, like when you have like this, have many this skip connection, you just make it easier to train. Like you have great information here, then you can go all the way like up to here to fit information to this layer. So you have this. This is actually a very similar flavor to if you look at the Google Lad um, earlier when you try to train it. Also, they insert like some intermediate block here, and in that case, I. This is like a similar flavor to this, so uh, and it's easier also. Like here, like you need to try to combine this uh, kind of uh, loss function together, 
But when, when you have the skip connection, you just doesn't care. You, you just put arbitrary skip connection here. And you have the gradient information just quickly from here, move to here, and so on. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I didn't, um, yeah, uh, yeah I, I, I don't know like whether that's like uh, very, uh, I didn't pay attention if there's like uh, very vigorous uh, analysis, analysis for this, but uh, I, I believe like many people believe in that also, like this gain is more likely. It's, it's really because of better training. Like you, you now you can really jump, like uh, allow to train some of this earlier layer uh, efficiently. Um, and um, and so this is like basically uh, some of this. Uh, oh oh, and, and also like maybe I mentioned also one more network is like uh, long long at the squeeze lat. This is I like, seem kind of like different from the like, other networks. The goal there is like, not just get better performance, but is that can I um, kind of have a model like one in a kind of cheaper hardware, for example, one on a cell phone that uh, will use like less memory footprint and also like can have like less number of operations. So then they try to squeeze the network. So they are not looking for a better performance, they squeeze the network, the ori original uh, Alex lad. And basically, borrow many of the earlier ideas, for example, like they replace like this. Uh, feedback B filters, I like, uh, using this bottle like layer, right? So you, no, I shouldn't say replace, but m more or less, like you, you squeeze the input this of this three by three uh, filters first by this one by one filters to make it uh, the input like to be thinner, uh, less less number of layers. Ah, oh, basically the second one. Oh. Yeah, actually, yeah, that's the second one. That's the second one I'm talking about. Oh, okay, maybe they indeed replace some of this three by three by one by one. And also, like, um, uh, this this is something else. I, uh, this this is I trying to make it more efficient, right? Make it less number of operation and uh, less memory footprint. Uh, but this one is like they find that if they delay the down sampling, typically when you, um, when we have the conflict, we always have like some either polling or like we can do strike two to do down sampling to increase the size of the uh, input somehow, the dimension of the input somehow. Uh, they find that like, um, because they do this like quite efficiently, they can delay this down sampling later. And they find that they can gain actually if they delay the down sampling uh, later in the network. And they do that, they manage to reduce the uh, the number of parameters I say significantly, the Alex lad, uh, with like kind of like fifty times fewer parameters, and they have the performance still like close to Alex lad, um, and basically the uh, uh, the the models can fit in like just like uh, less than one Mac. So it's like, if you remember, the like, Alex Lad is actually is actually pretty big the model, so they they can manage to make a model pretty small. And um, that's that's basically like a uh, you know, whirlwind tour of like many of this architecture. Of course, it's not latest; it's up to like around 2017. Uh, actually, you guys, uh, if you're interested, maybe you can take into like some of these newer architecture as well. But honestly, I think um, the computation problem is kind of beat to death already like, by by these deep newer network guys. So um, I'm not sure like, whether like, there, there are lots of like, significant work after this one, because like, performance wise, if you just talk about recognition, a simple recognition problem, like if you have image that um, classified into a thousand classes, many people consider that solved the problem. Uh, of course, you can still argue, like for example, you have fine grain, fine, fine grain, fine granularity, like if you have like uh, classes that, for example, I want to classify not just cat, dog, but I want to classify to different species of cats, then um, those problems, okay, I can't even promise if those problems are still open, but uh, 
couple of years ago, those problems are still open. But um, uh, now I, 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 I can't even for, for sure for those. So, okay, like, uh, I, can, I still have some, a little bit time, maybe I'll review some of these tricks that I mentioned many of them, but maybe a quick review, like when you deal with CNN, or actually in general, some of these tricks is useful like for like general neurological as well. So of course, one the first one is I always do data augmentation if you can. Actually, sometimes I love this. It's fashionable to talk about self, even self-supervised learning, right? So it's something like uh, you you can transform a uh, unsupervised problem into a supervised problem. Say, for example, if you have a NLP, is a very typical uh, kind of like example. So if you, uh, I if I want to kind of build a natural language processing model. Uh, I have a, a number of documents as my training data, or like I have the whole Wikipedia as my training data. I can build a model just to predict the next word, right? So then basically I have the previous maybe 10 characters or like 10 words or like, yeah, to predict the next words there. Then I, I basically transform, even though my data there is not labeled, but I can by doing that, of course, in that one, it's kind of lateral. I, I can train this model using supervised learning, right? So it's kind of like I get uh, label data for free. So I, I don't have a label data at the beginning, but uh, if I, of course, like for NLP, it's very obvious, but for some other problem, it may not be as obvious. And sometimes you can transform the problem somehow to make, uh, to create data that is a, like, uh, create some label data by yourself. I mean, free label data. I don't know whether we will get into that, but uh, yeah. So, but uh, at least like for for um, problem that like maybe you cannot kind of obviously convert into a self supervised problem. Uh, you can uh, at least to, to do some data augmentation, right? As we mentioned earlier that, for example, for image classification, maybe we can like rotate the image, introduce some noise, introduce different kind of like, uh, kind of warping and so on to uh, have data augmentation. Uh, so that that's one, one trick there is data augmentation. And the other, other trick, that I guess like some of you guys asked that earlier is a like transfer learning that's is uh basically essential. Like is we have all these models now, like Alex Lad or West Lad and so on and so forth. And each of them if you want to train them uh from scratch is super expensive. And typically we don't want to do that. But we can like convert, I mean just modify this model a little bit and shoot into our problem. Uh typically for example if you think of Maybe I have a a Alex lad, and uh, maybe I I have a new problem, or I have some new set of images, or like I'm working on not not um, kind of uh, lateral images, but I'm working on like medical images. Maybe they have some similar characteristic, but not completely. So maybe I can try to introduce a uh, or like I I I can remove some of the last layer. First thing, like I may do that, or like if I have same, same number of classes, maybe at times I only have a thousand classes, I may even keep the same same structure completely. But then like maybe I can freeze the earlier layers. I assume that earlier layers have share similar characteristics. Then I just like train the last several layers maybe. And of course, like, as I mentioned, uh, just now if I don't have the same number of like, uh, classes, maybe I still have a classification problem, but instead of a thousand classes, maybe I only have hundred classes. But then what I can do is I also, I can change the last layer instead of like FC, like fully connected layer with a thousand output, maybe I can have fully connected layer with only a hundred outputs. And then I can just change this layer, or maybe I can fine tune like several other layers as well. Uh, of course, I, I don't want, I don't need to start from scratch also. I, I, I can have the weights like here. I can use the original weights that already, the weight, the pre-trained weight as, a, as the starting point. So therefore, like we, we say we are doing fine tuning instead of like uh, training from scratch here. So, uh, 
And so it's not like yeah. you're running the training data through the entire thing, but you only back propagate to the layers that you're training? Yeah, actually you, you back pop to everywhere. Oh, okay, of course you can stop here as well. Uh, um, but as long as you, when you have the update, for example, if you are doing the gradient descent, then I have like weight is equal to my weight, uh, maybe minus the gradient, right? The loss multiplied by the learning rate, let's say the simplest gradient descent. So I, I can have like maybe I compute the gradient, maybe I need to flip back to earlier, but typically it won't happen like this. Um, I can compute gradient for everywhere, but I just don't do this update, right? Just it's for this layer. Yes. Yeah, yeah, for example, like I can compute gradients everywhere, but I don't do updates for these layers here. Uh, actually, um, uh, if you look at the fast AI library, uh, they are quite successful like, in, in terms of this kind of training. They even do something uh, a little bit more fancy. It's like, uh, but it's still like very intuitive. It's like instead of facing a particular layer, they just have like a different weight there. So for example, the learning weight here will be smaller at the beginning layer. So they just they just like um, well, ex um, yeah, kind of exponentially increasing the uh, learning weight. So in the later layers, you have a larger learning weight, and the earlier layers you have low, smaller learning weight. So uh, you can do that as well. Um, and um, so, uh, yeah, fine tuning is very important, and uh, I mean the transfer learning is very important, and uh, and this is one of the earlier work that uh, Kav showed the uh, showed that transfer learning actually works. I think like they, I forgot like which model they use. Basically, they they use one of the earlier probably Alex lab or something, and then they try to just fine tune the last layers for different problems, and all oh, it worked pretty well. So, um, and uh, yeah, this is this just, just not very important, I guess. And of course, I, uh, yeah, this used to be like uh, Cafe have a model zoo, but of course, I, for all packages like TensorFlow and also like PyTorch, you can just see they find like different models like and wide away. Uh, another trick we mentioned is like small filters, right? So it's very popular now, like you, you uh, where often like we, we won't go for like, for example, like large filter, like, like seven by seven. Instead of like seven by seven, we, we can just cascade like three layers of like three by three. They have the same effect more or less, and they have less number of parameters and typically will, uh, will have better performance. And uh, of course like, we can also like use like one by one filters and as we mentioned, we can have it, this bottleneck layer to squeeze the dimension first. And then like if we, we go for, for example, if I have three by three layer, we can reduce the dimension first, like maybe by input, as we mentioned earlier, maybe the original our input like have thickness 128, then we squeeze to like maybe just like 32, and then we go through the conflict and then expand that uh, 32 back to 128, say. So, and this we will, again, reduce number of operation and number of parameters. Um, and uh, let's see, what else? Yeah, that's used a lot. Uh, um, and uh, finally, like, uh, I guess it's not really very important. As you're aware, like, um, we are actually doing this stop product, right? In practice, like, we have this, this is the input image, and then this is the filter. We are actually have this like doing dot pod like, with each of the, uh, just have, have this filter move around. Right? So it's essentially it's re really you can, for the actual implementation, it's always like this guy will be kind of uh, rearranged into a matrix. Right? And this filter also we rearrange into matrix. Then everything will become a matrix multiplication in practice. So therefore, like, um, actually, when you are in a real lateral real actual implementation, we typically we don't worry about that. Uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, it uh, eventually will, uh, what's that called? Uh, ultimately, it's just a bunch of like uh, matrix multiplications. And, uh, and so therefore, like, that's actually works. Like, for example, to improve, 
uh, this efficiency, uh, for example, that works. I, I, I won't go into detail because I, I, I don't think like uh, most of us are, are interested in that. So, but it is good to aware that like this ultimately all this implementation will boil down into like just matrix multiplication. And uh, uh, for example, there are works that you can uh, quite significantly speed up by just say uh, improve the cup this matrix multiplication. For example, like this work here that you can, uh, if you multiply this matrix like A, A and B, is that like, then if you think of this speed into this uh, sub matrix here, and then you can rearrange things to speed it up and somehow. So instead of like, uh, Originally, when you have like uh, a matrix multiplication, is supposed to be a O n cube. Uh, but if you're doing trick side that, you can re reduce the uh, the capacity to O this like big O n two to a something like that. Uh, yeah, I won't go into details of this. I have this old slides on on the like, GPUs. I guess like this is totally outdated. Like everyone is like, no, like we need to the GPUs. I won't go through that now. Uh, and maybe just like a kind of like a common, like maybe not everyone, every of us aware of that, like uh, for for machine learning typically, because think of that, like the difference of machine learning from um, optimization is that like, you don't actually have an exact problem. Your optimization problem is from the training data. This is not something, it's just approximation of that real problem you're trying to solve. So therefore, like, accuracy is not really precision. It's not the ultimate, ultimately leader. Because to begin with, your problem is not precise. So why I need to have a precise solution? So therefore, it makes lots of sense that like people realize we don't really need to have so high precision. So therefore, like first people start start with doing double, and then they realize they don't need double. They can do for single, and then later on they. They know they can even reduce the position further. Mm -hmm. So therefore, if you have this TPU, they actually have, uh, and also like in the newer GPU, they have uh, kind of like half precision, like further lower the precision too. Uh, and then, then that you can gain in terms of performance. Uh, and uh, that's some trend you can go uh, pretty low precision, like, one bit activation. I, I don't know. I didn't follow this work. I don't know how it goes. Um, um, but I guess this definitely is a, a reasonable uh, remark that, like, of course, like, the problems to start with is imprecise. Why do I want to have a precise solution anyway? Are we at 16 right now? Yeah. Uh, it's a soon. I think they soon. have, like, because I, my, this slide is like, very old. <laughs> This is a like, copy from like shamelessly copy from yeah they have good slides anyway like back in like 2016 so um and I don't I can't afford it because I now I guess I I'm not sure Justin Johnson is still there Kapaf is absolutely very good so uh, I don't know whether you guys watch CS 231 right to start with like uh Fifi Lee was not teaching that <laughs> I think she was having a baby at that time then I she easily like handed her course like to her like GA like uh, basically graduate assistant, uh, MTA slash TA and uh, Kapafi is super good and so uh, therefore like it's a very well designed course and then I like, uh, I don't know whether they just then after he graduated he kind of like gave this to Justin Johnson. Uh, I think Johnson is still good, but I think Kapaf is like out of the league. So then, um, I don't know who is taking care of that anymore. And then, like, apparently they they, they do not open this course anymore. Like, uh, so therefore, like, you cannot see only uh, there's no update anymore. So, other otherwise, I would just borrow stuff from them. But uh, yeah, but it's okay. That's uh, but in terms of computation application, I also believe that like not too many new stuffs anymore like uh, you uh, of course I, I will still talk a little bit more like uh, for different applications like for example detection cementation and so on that's yeah but mm, yeah
So, but I uh, have like 10, less than 10 minutes. So, uh, I guess I, I should um, spend some time to talk about presentation just very quickly. Okay, I, I don't know whether this is like, um, so I, I'm thinking maybe this is not the white right one. This is for the other class. So, but it's very similar. Uh, actually, the most important thing I'd like to mention is that, um, of course, I, uh, I I I think you guys know how to present. I don't need to teach you guys how to present. Okay, I'm sure you guys are present better than I do. Um, and uh, so, but I, I'm asking the the audience. Okay, you guys are not. Uh, you have some tasks to do as well. I, I ask you guys to judge the presentations for me. Uh, I, I'm I don't want to be the judge really. So I I think I. You guys will be the judge to see like whether. Um, how good or bad the presentations and um, I, I basically will give a very short assignment in Canvas but basically just a questionnaire for you guys to fill in after each of the presentation and uh, you, you that that will be you will get some uh, okay this contribute to your final grade as well but it's very tiny it's just one point there so uh, but uh, for that one I will be very straight on the to be not to be late because I, I don't think it's reasonable for you guys to give a review like ten days after a presentation. That that probably the information won't be very useful. So I will ask you guys to finish your review like within by the midnight of next day basically. So the, after that like the it will be closed. So the window will be closed or uh, uh, submission won't be accepted. So but most importantly, I, I will ask you guys to not just I say, okay, 10, 5, some, give some points there. So I want you guys to give uh, constructive comments. One, one line, one sentence is good enough. But just say honestly, like, what do you think about the presentation? What's good and what's bad? And it's very helpful like, to the presenter. And uh, uh, I, I will, typically what I did is I, I, I will gather all these comments. I will send it back to the presenter. I think it's very helpful to him. And, um, and uh, as I mentioned, this submission for this review won't be accepted. Uh, and final project, like maybe it's a little bit early to mention, but I guess I, I will just, man I, I will come back to this later on, but I guess I, I, I probably I should just mention that, okay, you, you were supposed to submit a proposal for this uh, final project. Uh, it's still like early uh, April, so I I guess I um, uh, of course it's again like it's it's not final like you miss a proposal, so if it ended up like you realize okay you can't propose like, certain approaches but it doesn't work you move to uh, some other approaches that's totally fine, there's no penalty for that, but I just want to push you guys to come kind of not can't work on that until the last week so so that that's the that's the basically the motivation there the final project is in groups that's the thing you if you like you want to you can be in group if you don't want to you you can work on it yourself but i have uh i guess i uh my original i guess very few professors did that is like I I I I'm not sure I'm not saying that I'm, I don't like teamwork but as a reasonable manager, I don't think it makes sense to have a project have uh, eight people work on that. So uh, I actually I will put on penalty when you have the team size get bigger. So basically, the penalty also go exponentially. So, but it's reasonable if you have like the project. Let's say if you have like two team members or three members, three team members, three team members, you are starting to get a little bit penalty, but it's it's tiny. It's only five percent. But it will go like exponentially. If you have six, seven, I, I don't think it makes sense. Uh, anyway, like this class is small. I don't think you will have. Yeah. So, um, 
But yeah, two team members are totally fine. And, and also like um roughly speaking, uh oh okay, you you're supposed to submit your written report, of course that's the final submission will be due like May seven. And uh, any form is fine, but some conference like report is encouraged because I it would be great, right? Maybe you submit this afterward, you can just submit to a conference, right? So, and uh, you should just like, describe what, it's just think of like read, reading a conference paper, like what they talk about is it's like what you talk about. So just, uh, you just need to fill in all the questions, like potential questions to, to the of the readers. So uh, when they look at that, like, it's very apparent, right? Like what problems? So why is it important? The problems, like, it's still a thing. It's, it's it's still a thing, or like, is it too old? Uh, and uh, and uh, what's your approach or approaches? And how did you evaluate your approaches? And why it works? Why it doesn't work? And and I won't penalize you a a lot if failure. I I mean I I I'm honestly I'm really looking for effort. Like so, if you it turns out you pay your effort, it didn't work out well. I I'm totally fine with that. So, but you need to explain that. Right? It's just think of that. Like this is like some kind of like project, uh, like uh, at work. Like after two months, it didn't work. You still need to explain to your manager why it didn't work. Right? So, um, I'm ex at, as long as you can convince, like have a convinced argument that you try your best. Like okay. And your original idea makes sense. Like, okay, you you try that, but it didn't work somehow. Uh, then then actually sometimes it will be the. Actually, that's that's actually sometimes it's gold, um, because I uh, you have anticipate that should work like that, but somehow it just didn't work. Then that means that like something is just out of what you originally expected, and that that's surprise. Actually, I think like that's. When I think of like what is most valuable in terms of publication, it's really surprise, <laughs> right? If you really have something like that, it's actually it's good. It's not bad, uh, and you you should document that well. And um, and uh, the expectation is like kind of like that. Very roughly, if you just submit anything, it doesn't. It will be like one fourth of the grade. If you you get uh, that. Department level competition. I say department level. If you, um, I think like the department is trying to propose to have some um, kind of like uh, uh, what they call like seminar courses. So it'd be like that. Like I guess like some of you guys may be participating in those in the future. And in Tosa, they already doing that. Like so, um, if you are doing kind of like work in that level, you expect a half of the grade. If you have this university level competition, you have three quarter of the grade, and so on and so forth. So, um, but of course, uh, this is rough. Like, uh, and as I said, like I, I don't penalize you that much for failure. So, uh, so when I say like national level, I, I think like this is unfair. Like sometimes I think like in conferences, they like, they only document. I, I guess I I listen to one of these. Um, Presentation. Uh, what did I say? I I forgot. Like who? Uh, I think it's uh, the 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 creator of Fast AI. I think he he's he's why um kind of, uh, saying that. I'm I forgot whether it's him or not. But uh, basically, like in computer science or like maybe in engineering also, when you submit a paper. You don't accept that much of failure, or like you abs you you don't. For example, like if you have an oscillation, that's something interesting. You typically they won't accept that for a journal or like conference publication, uh, for a good conference or like good journal publication, and for all other disciplines, actually it's acceptable. For example, in physics, you discover something like really interesting, like it, you don't you don't know how to explain that, but you can totally put it there in a conference, and totally it's a good paper. But in conf in computer science in engineering, it looks like it's not acceptable, and somehow it's just a culture. I I don't think it's a actually white culture and good culture. But 
for me, I, I think it's totally acceptable. Like if you have a really nice discovery, but you don't know how to explain that yet. Yeah, I think it's a good, good, actually good work. I, I don't think it's actually not acceptable. So uh, anyway, I, I, I guess I will just end here. So, uh, uh, and uh, so, and remember you guys have homework and then I will uh, see you guys uh, this first day. So, I guess I'll stop. <laughs>